Okay guys, in this video, I will discuss about the diaphragm action in any steel building. Okay, and also how we can be benefited from this diaphragm action. Okay, so if you are new to this channel, please don't forget to subscribe and also don't forget to press the bell icon so that in future you can be benefited. Okay, so let's start today's discussion on diaphragm action. Okay, so at the very first, if you are a beginner in that case, definitely this question arises within you that what do you mean by diaphragm? Okay, the simple answer is that if you have ever seen any steel structure, you know that you have some column, some rafter, you will have some side rail, also some purlin, some bracing. Okay, and if you call all this component as a whole, you can call this as the steel skeleton okay or the skeleton structure now once you have put some sitting okay here you can see that at the roof we have put some sheeting arrangement okay now you can call this roof as a diaphragm instead of a skeleton structure okay so the simple answer of a diaphragm is a continuous 3d member got it okay now when we need to use this diaphragm concept okay simple answer whenever you are going to design any structural component under the action of lateral load if you use this diaphragm concept in that case you can save a lot of money okay i know that it is sounding a little bit complicated so the next question is how we can use this diaphragm concept okay so consider this pre engineered building system to understand the diaphragm concept okay and also how we can be benefited from this concept okay so start with the column okay we are considering these two column this is first column this is the second column okay and let's say we have some lateral load acting on this building okay like this or like this okay so this is the column number one this is the column number two and we have some lateral load acting on column one only now what will be the effect definitely this column is going to buckle heavily like this and this column number two is going to be unaffected by this lateral load as a result you need to use a huge member size for column one but a very little or a smaller column size for column two okay now consider case two let's say you have put some strut and as well as some bracing now what will happen for this lateral load simply some lateral load will goes through this bracing to this foundation directly without affecting any column but for this lateral load and for this lateral load this column will buckle like this okay and now you need a lesser member size compared to case one okay why because in case one you had an effective length let's say twice of l let's say this is l right but now you have effective length of only l by 2 as a result you can use a smaller section size to carry this lateral load and also through this strut this column is also going to carry some amount of load as a result you can now say that this lateral load has been distributed within this two column and now you need to use more or less same size for the two column and definitely now the size is less the column size is less in case of two compared to in case of one or the previous cases clear now let's say on the skeleton structure we are putting some seat with the help of this shite rail here you can see these are the side rail and now we have put some sitting arrangement now what will happen definitely now you can use lesser size of column section okay compared to your case 2 why the answer is very simple in case 2 you had effective length of l by 2 and based on that you have designed your column column 1 and column 2 
okay and why this is l by 2 because based on your longitudinal start and your bracing arrangement the column will buckle like this as a result you have to use the effective length as l by 2 but once you have put this side rail as well as this sitting this is the sitting what will happen the effective length of this column is now much less than l by 2 okay you cannot definitely say that now the column will buckle like this and this no it will not rather it may buckle like this okay due to the diaphragm effect of this side rail along with this sitting arrangement okay now this whole system is going to act as a single entity okay in this case you have designed this structure or this skeleton structure in your stad or risa or etabs whatever you can use as individual member you have designed all of this column this bracing this longitudinal strut you have designed them as individual member but in this case once you have put the side rail as well as the sitting arrangement this whole system is going to act as a single entity okay so as a result of which you can use a lesser column size compared to case 2 so definitely if you use this diaphragm effect you can save a lot of money on the size of column got it the same is also applicable for the roof okay now you have understood how you can reduce this column size by using the uh, diaphragm accent due to this sheeting right due to this sheeting you can use this diaphragm accent to design this column okay now let's understand how you can use this diaphragm accent to design this rafter okay let's consider this column as paint support okay and you have two rafter this is first rafter and you have another rafter here this is rafter 2 this is rafter 1 so first consider the case number 1 here you have some lateral load okay and due to this lateral load definitely this beam is going to buckle like this and you know here this beam or this rafter is buckling about its minor axis as a result of which you need a huge section size to carry this lateral load got it now let's say you have put some longitudinal strut as well as some bracing arrangement okay so now this lateral load is going to transfer like this this is going to be transferred like this and this raptor is also going to be affected okay as this is connected with this raptor through this long strut right now you can use lesser raptor size for column one compared to case one why the same answer here the effective length is l let's say the total length is l so l is the effective length but here by using this bracing arrangement you have reduced this to let's say l by 2 so definitely the section requirement for raptor 1 is less compared to case 1 okay now let's say you have put some roof sheeting okay so these are the parlins okay and you have put the roof sheeting here so now once you have applied this lateral load what will happen again this raptor is going to buckle like this right no 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 why because you have put lots of purlin and also the roof sheeting as a result this whole system again is acting as a single entity okay this raptor now may buckle like this this like this you do not know okay so as a result of which the load carrying capacity along with this minor axis buckling is much more compared to case 2 as a result now you can use a lesser section size for designing this raptor compared to your case 2 got it so thus by using this diaphragm accent we can reduce or we can economically design our column as well as the raptor got it so that's it if you love this video don't forget to share it